Okay, we are going to take a look at this functions question where in part A, we are first going to be required to do two things. Number one, we want to get the expression of f inverse when we have fx that is given to me as an x squared over x minus 4, where x is supposed to be bigger than 4, less than or equal to 8. And we are also supposed to write down the domain of f inverse. So let's work on this first. We are going to try to make x a subject. So cross multiplying here, we have uh, xy minus 4y. This is equal to x squared. I'm going to bring this over to the right hand side. We will have uh, x squared minus xy. Let me write it as y multiplied by x because I want to see it as a quadratic equation that is in terms of x. So minus y will become the coefficient. So we have this um, plus 4y. This is equal to 0. x here is going to be equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac. We have this divided by 2a, which is going to be um, this. Divided by this, we will have a half y plus or minus, we will have a half square root of, here we have a y square minus 16y. I personally find it a bit tough to decide whether I want a plus or a minus based on just the expression itself. So I did a little bit of um, testing, which is by making use of the fact that we are working on one-to-one -one function. So if I were to pick an x that is between 4 to 8, for example, um, 5. Okay, so if I were to let x be equal to 5, if I were to substitute into here, I am going to be getting y to be equal to 5 squared 25 over 5 minus 4, which is 1. So y is going to be equal to 25. And then based on this, I am going to work on two different versions. One is when um, y is 25 and I pick a plus. I'm hoping that the result is going to give me a 5 as an x, okay, which is going to be the output. So what I mean is this. So if I were to put a half y, which is going to be equal to 25 for my test, plus half square root of, then 25 squared minus 16 times 25. I'm hoping for a 5 as an x, as the output of this expression. But when I put 25 in here, I'm going to be getting a 20. When I choose a plus, and when I choose a minus, so it will be half 25 minus half square root of 25 squared minus 16 times 25. When I calculate for this, this gives me a 5. So I know minus is actually going to be the expression that we should be choosing. So based on this, based on this analysis that we just did here, we are going to be choosing this as a half y minus half square root of y square minus 16y. And this is when we are working with x that is between 4 to 8, because only when it is this expression, then I will be able to be producing values of x that is between 4 to 8. So based on this, we have the expression for f inverse. f inverse is going to be half x minus half square root of x squared minus 16x. Okay, so this is the expression for f inverse we are also supposed to code the domain of f inverse. And for that, we are going to take a look at the graph of y is equal to fx. So for the expression of fx, it is equal to x squared over x minus 4. Um, let's do a long division to try to re-express this so that we can take a look at the oblique asymptote of this rational expression here. Doing a long division, we have uh, x plus 4, so plus 16 over x minus 4. And if I were to look at the graph, um, yep, we have an oblique asymptote, we have a vertical asymptote, yeah, but if I were to be taking the region of the graph that is based on the domain that is given to us, which is from 4 to 8, the graph is going to look something that is like this. So let me do a quick sketch of it. The y-axis, this is my x-axis, we will be looking at 
the vertical asymptote x is equal to 4 and the graph will be something that is like this. Okay, from 4 to 8. So when here is 8, the output is going to be equal to 16. So this is my graph of y is equal to fx. And based on this graph, we will be able to see the range of f. And the range of f based on this is going to be from 16 all the way until infinity. So it will be 16 to infinity and inclusive of 16. Since here we have a solid dot. And this will be giving me the domain of f inverse. And we are supposed to, for the second part of part A, sketch the graph of f and f inverse. So we already have a sketch of fx. Let me do that sketch here. So we're going to be sketching two graphs. And very importantly, although the question didn't tell us to do so, we should sketch in the line y is equal to x so that we can try to display the relationship between the graph of y is equal to fx and y is equal to f inverse x, which is a reflection about the line y is equal to x. Okay, so let me draw the graph. Um, let me draw a slightly bigger graph than this. Since now I'm going to be drawing two graphs on the xy axis. So let's say we have here, okay, the y axis, and here, this here is going to be my x axis. Okay, it turns out to be almost the same size, but I think this is good enough for me. I am going to draw in the line y is equal to x. I am going to go for a dotted line, but I think there's no problem even if we want to go for a solid line. So drawing a dotted line on our graph is us trying to use it as a reference line. So it is a reference to me indeed. We have also this vertical asymptote for the graph of y is equal to fx. So I'm going to draw it here. Something like this. Here. This is x is equal to 4. And the graph is like this. Okay, where here is actually a turning point based on the original graph of this that we have plotted onto our GC. And this point here is 8, 16. This is the graph of y is equal to fx. Doing a reflection of this about the line y is equal to x, this vertical asymptote will become horizontal asymptote. So we will have this. This is y is equal to 4. And this point will become a point 16, 8. So let me draw it somewhere here maybe. Okay, this point here is 16, 8. And we will draw the graph tending towards the horizontal asymptote. Yeah. So this is my graph of y is equal to f inverse x. Okay, so this is what we are looking at for part A. Let's continue. Let's take a look at part B of this question, which is getting a bit interesting over here. We are looking at this region R that is bounded by the curve y is equal to f inverse x, this, and the lines y is equal to 5, y is equal to 8, and the y axis. Let's try to recognize this region R first before we even try to think about calculating for its exact area. So it is going to be bounded by this curve y is equal to fx and the line y is equal to 5, something that is like this. Okay, so here is 5, then 8. 8 is going to be according to the y coordinate of this point. So it is going to be here. Okay, 8. So we are looking at this area now. Okay, and to find this area, yes, of course, we can find specifically the area that is for this region. This is region R. But the area can also be calculated if I were to be looking at just its value, right? Based on the reflected portion of this, right? Okay, because if I were to look at this as a reflection about the, y, about the line y is equal to x, then uh, we are actually looking at a region which is starting from 5 here, starting from 5, all the way until 8 here, this, and this area here. Okay, it's going to give us exactly the same value as the area of region R, which is the red colored region here. So we're going to make use of this, okay, instead of the original region to calculate for the exact area of region R. So based on our analysis, the area of region R, 
can also be calculated based on this black colored area here, which is going to be from 5 to 8 of fx, which is going to be based on this. Okay, I'm going to go for this. This is way easier for us to integrate. Okay, but let me just write down this first. So at least we have some reference back to fx that we are actually using. So this is going to be integrating from 5 to 8 of x plus 4 plus 16 over x minus 4. This is a very, very easy integral to evaluate. This is like secondary school, right? So this is going to be x squared over 2 plus 4x plus 16 ln modulus of x minus 4. And we are integrating this from 5 to 8. If I, to, if I were to substitute 8 in, it is going to be 64 over 2 plus 32 plus 16 ln 8 minus 4, so here will be ln 4. Then minus away, substituting 5 in, we have a 25 over 2, 4 times 5, 20, plus 16, ln 1. Okay, ln 1 is going to be equal to 0. So evaluating this, the exact area of region R is going to be 63 over 2, plus 16, ln 4.